So I think that this might be helpful in showing you that with even stone knives and bear skins, you could build a really good project. Hey everybody, this is my 10 year anniversary of making videos on YouTube. And I thought it'd be interesting to make a video reflecting back on not just my YouTube life since 2008, but kind of how the space has changed for woodworkers and makers and how creative content has evolved. YouTube was still pretty new back in 2008 when I posted my first woodworking video. It had a much more personal feel. The you was still a big part of YouTube. YouTube. There were some people who were experimenting with the platform for business and a few YouTube celebrities were already emerging, but most of us were just making videos for fun. It was a great way to share what we were up to with friends and family. My first videos on this channel had nothing to do with woodworking. Mostly they were family videos and a lot of roller coaster videos. Wyatt and I rode every single coaster in California and I shot POV videos with my little Sony Cybershot camera. Even after I began making woodworking videos, I still mixed it up with roller coaster videos. It was a woodworking slash roller coaster channel. A lot of channels were a mishmash like that. I've since removed all of those coaster videos, but I did keep one, the Giant Dipper at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. It's still here on this channel if you want to prowl around and find it. We're at the Giant Dipper, the historic roller coaster. Are you ready to dip? I really didn't plan out anything on this channel. That's the Brady Bunch house. I needed a username, so without much thought, I entered Steve in Marin because I live in Marin County. Only I missed typing the second E in my own name and my username permanently became Stev in Marin. For a long time, a lot of people thought my name was Stev or Stevin. Today, usernames are mostly irrelevant, but you can almost always identify an old channel by its awkward handle. Everything changed for me in August 2008 when I made a chessboard and posted it in seven long, boring videos. That was my first woodworking video. YouTube had a 10 minute limit on videos back then, so I had to try to break it up into logical stopping points. Okay, it's time to round out a profile along the top edge. I mostly shot it for my own benefit. I just wanted to document the building process, and I, I kind of secretly wanted to copy Norm Abram, only using crappy tools. I never really expected anyone to actually find it and watch it, but somehow people did find it. And I remember getting my first comments and wondering, wow, how cool is that? People also began to rate my videos. Back before likes and dislikes, YouTube had a five-star rating system. I, I also had people subscribe and people who friended me. I, I never really understood what the difference was between a friend and a subscriber, but I, I guess that's why YouTube got rid of that feature. Oh, and speaking of old features. Remember when you could customize your channel page? There were a lot of really hideous looking background wallpapers. And yet you couldn't add a custom thumbnail. You had to pick from three random frames in a video. Some of my first videos still have those random thumbnails. One thing that hasn't changed about YouTube is the way people react every time YouTube changes or eliminates a feature. There was so much fury when they eliminated the custom pages. YouTube is so ugly now, everything looks the same. And of course, it's changed a lot since then too. There was a lot more of a fun feel to YouTube in 2008 though. People weren't carefully crafting their personal brands and gaming the algorithms. There wasn't this obsession over analytics and subscriber counts. But I do remember when Fred, Fred Figglehorn, became the first channel on YouTube to reach a million subscribers. That was absolutely insane. Hey, it's Fred! That many people watching a kid doing a silly voice. I think YouTube sent him a cake. That was long before the gold play buttons existed. Of course, today thousands of channels have over a million subs. In the maker slash woodworking space, there was only a few of us. Mark was one of the first. In fact, I sent him a link to my chessboard video and I, I remember his advice. Be careful what you show on camera. People will jump all over things that they think are unsafe. So. Not much has changed there. And I think Matthias was one of us early adopters who is still cranking out content, albeit, like me, not as many project videos. I have a much more complicated way of making those holes. That does not surprise me. Oops, I'm 
I'm sorry. There were a few others who have long since stopped making videos, but that was about it. Creators came and went. Today there are thousands of woodworking maker DIY channels. I can't keep up with them all. It's definitely a saturated space. So eventually more people were interested in my woodworking videos than my roller coaster videos. So I deleted all of my theme park videos. I even deleted an entire summer of videos I made showing how I restored my old redwood deck. Since it wasn't strictly woodworking, I didn't think it fit on the channel. Spacers that I can use to stick in there so that they'll all be the same width. Now I'm just gonna clamp it down. That summer was an important turning point in my life because I worked out in the sun without any sunscreen per se. In 2010, I was diagnosed with melanoma cancer on my left ear and thankfully caught it in time and had half of my ear removed and reconstructed. You probably never noticed how much smaller this ear is than that ear. If I had waited another month or two, I wouldn't be here today. And for those of you who remember that period, thank you all for your support. Your comments and positivity helped me get through it. And here I am now, eight years cancer free. Something like that motivates a person. And I quit drinking, I started eating healthy, and I took up running and strength training. I lost 30 pounds and because losing weight in America is so rare, I still get a lot of comments from people assuming that I'm ill or that I look unhealthy. I'm okay, I'm just not eating as much junk. In 2011, an amazing thing happened. Lainey Shaughnessy and a few other online woodworkers that's before we were called content creators, and viewers secretly got together and bought me a new table saw to replace my old craftsman saw. It was really one of the most touching things that has ever happened to me. I just heard a truck come. Let's go take a look. Hey, how's it going? And here is what showed up. Look what I got. I didn't buy this saw. This was a real special gift. Uh, spearheaded by Lainey Shaughnessy. I'm just a guy who just has a bunch of tools and, and makes some videos and so it's it kind of surprises me when when something like this happens. I really miss Lainey and all those guys but people come and people go. So going way back to 1997, I started my own graphic design firm, ZRAM Media. It's Ramsey kind of phonetically backwards. And in my early YouTube years, I was still working as a graphic designer as well as homeschooling Wyatt while making YouTube videos on weekends. I never had an official I quit my job moment, but I just kind of gradually transitioned into full-time content creation. People were mostly responding to my videos because they weren't overproduced. The most common comments I received were thanking me for showing how to make stuff using affordable tools in a garage. Well, that was easy because I didn't have money for expensive tools and well I used my garage as a workshop. I still use an on-camera mic, I don't use a drone, and I rarely record voiceovers. I don't have a cameraman and I still edit my own videos. I do however own a tripod now. I came up with the name Woodworking for Mere Mortals to poke fun at basically all the woodworking media that was available. Mostly stuff on TV and DVDs and a few online resources. As much as I love Norm Abram, I really wanted to be the opposite and just show people that you don't need high-end expensive tools and a huge shop to make cool stuff. My mission hasn't changed since then. In fact, my message is even more relevant today. More on that later. Those first few years on YouTube were fun and weird and experimental for me. If I didn't post a project video, people didn't get cranky. In addition to project videos, I had a blast making really bad woodworking music videos. I did some fake commercials and parodies. I, I even rapped. Learn to use some tools. I can't rap, but I can try. I'm just a middle-aged white guy. Some of those videos are really embarrassing. And really, one of the biggest changes in the maker community is that there's a lot less room for silliness now. 
most viewers demand that every video get immediately to the project and just show the build. You have to hook the audience in the first 10 seconds or they'll click away. Making has become serious business now and getting clicks is how you survive. In many ways, the maker movement and YouTube has become what woodworking was in the 2000s. These are very polished products and they're kind of Norm Abram for a new generation. YouTube is becoming TV. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong about enjoying this content. It's why I loved watching the new Yankee workshop all those years. I knew I would never have a shop like Norm's or afford those tools, but I, I just liked watching him build stuff. Like most YouTube content, these are lean back experiences. In fact, a very common comment on many of today's woodworking videos is, I'll never make any of this stuff, but I just like watching your videos. Sometimes these are called inspiration videos, but unless viewers take action, they're really entertainment videos. And I think there's a strong need for a real educational content, but unfortunately YouTube will not support this kind of content. Ironically, it's why I've doubled down on my efforts to produce educational content off-platform. In the past few years, I've discovered that people are less interested in project videos and more interested in tips, hacks, and technique videos. Either that or like crazy projects that nobody will actually make, but we just like to watch them because it's fun to see somebody make them. Videos about making practical projects like furniture just tank. YouTube is simply the wrong platform for educational programming. So while view counts on tips and tricks videos are much higher than project videos, my basics videos are super popular, I noticed something curious. The people who do watch my project videos are far more engaged and the viewer retention rate, how long people sit through the entire video, is much higher on project videos. In other words, there's a core group of people who don't want to just sit back and watch my videos, but want to actively learn woodworking and build projects. Not just a few tips and inspiration here and there, but actual step-by-step -step learning. The comments on my project videos are often highly thought out and filled with questions asking about my process. People asking if I could slow down a little and take Take some time to really explain what I'm doing and how I'm building. Kind of like I did with my chessboard 10 years ago. And this presented me with a dilemma. In order to earn a living wage on YouTube, you really need sponsors. And that means you need view counts. Subscriber numbers are irrelevant. Advertisers and sponsors just want eyeballs and lots of them. This demands simple, more frequent content without a lot of meat. YouTube rewards creators who can produce daily content. Some channels produce several videos a day. Quantity is way more important than quality. So I really wanted a way to reach those highly motivated people who wanted long form educational content. I wanted a way to get back to my YouTube roots yet still earn a living. And that's why I created Shameless plug, the Weekend Woodworker online courses. It's really a way for me to provide the highly detailed projects many people want to build, and I don't have to be concerned about retention rates and analytics. I can show people with little or no experience exactly what I'm doing, and more importantly, why I'm doing it without glossing over any step. The cool thing personally for me is that the Weekend Woodworker has reinvigorated my love for woodworking 100%. And of course, one of the most common questions I get these days is why I don't post as many videos as I used to. And ironically, it's because I'm spending my time making woodworking videos. The best woodworking projects and videos I've ever made. These are highly detailed and very time consuming to produce. It can take me four weeks to produce one project video. And unfortunately, the reality is that it's just not financially feasible to post that kind of content on YouTube. But of course, I'll continue to post videos and project videos on YouTube as often as I can. Hey, my, my Halloween videos are some of my personal favorites, even if they don't get a lot of views. And really, zombies and gore on YouTube, especially a woodworking channel, definitely aren't as acceptable in 2018 as they were in 2014. <laughs> And 
And that's where I've come in 10 years. I still love YouTube and it completely changed my life for the better. I've met tons of great people and gotten to know so many of you. In many ways, I've come full circle, creating the content I love to create and am most passionate about for viewers who love to learn. My video gear has changed a little. My, hey, my hair is a little less gray. And there's 30 fewer pounds of me, but I'm still in this same cramped garage. This is my perfect dream shop with mostly my same crappy tools. And I still love showing people how to make cool, practical projects without a ton of money and without a lot of expensive tools and a ton of space. And I can't wait to see where my little woodworking revolution, woodworking for mere mortals will lead over the next 10 years. Most of all, I want to thank all of you who have enjoyed the show over these years and especially those of you who have been with me since the beginning. Thanks for watching everybody.